Hey everyone, and welcome back to Swift Guitar Lessons for another Buyer Quest song tutorial. Today, I'm very excited to bring you a very beginner friendly tune in Bob Dylan's 1963 classic, Blown in the Wind. I'm going to take you through the chord progression for the verse and the chorus and show you some of Bob Dylan's signature folk tricks. I got all the tabs and chords available for you at patreon.com slash swiftlessons where if you support the channel for just one dollar a month you can gain access to a ton of extra resources. Now let's get started with your lesson. One, two, three, four. How many roads must a man walk down before you call him a man? Yes, and how many seas must the white dove sail before she sleeps in the sand? Yes, and how many times must the cannonballs fly before they're forever banned? The answer, my friends, is blowing in the wind. The answer. Okay, close look at the fretboard and also my strum in hand, getting started with Bob Dylan's Blown in the Wind. We're in standard tuning and we have a capo here on the seventh fret, though sometimes you'll see Bob perform this live without the capo, he just sings a little higher. We're only going to need three chords throughout the tune. A G major shape, a C major shape, and a D major shape. Okay, so let's get started with verse number one. We're gonna begin learning the progression. I'll show you how many beats each chord's gonna get. Then I'll share with you a strumming pattern that you can use throughout the whole tune. For the more advanced players out there, I'll share with you how Bob transitions from chord to chord using walk downs. Something like that. Okay, so the first chord progression we're gonna have is a G, one measure, C for one measure, and then G for two measures. You can do that three times, okay? How many roads must a man walk down Before you call him a man That was two How many seas must the white dove sail Okay, then on the fourth time we're gonna do G, C, D, okay? Before she sleeps in the sand Just like that. Then we're back to the first chord progression, G, C, G, G. Yes, how many times must the cannonballs fly? Repeat that again. Before they're forever banned. And there you have it. That's the entire verse. You're going to repeat that for all the verses. 
Okay, so now you have the basic progression for the verse. A 1-4-1 one, one progression, G, C, G, and a 1-4-5 progression, G, C, D. Now let's apply a very common country style strumming pattern to this. Root down, down, up, down. strumming pattern that you hear right out the gate in the original recording. So root down, down, up, down, one, two, three, and four. Sometimes you might hear Bob throw in some extra stuff and extra strum, especially after the fourth beat. Just like that. But generally speaking, the strumming pattern that you need to get down, root down, down, up, down. Okay? Let's see if we can apply that to our G, C, G, G progression. Should sound like this. Okay, then you would try it over your G, C, D progression. Okay, now one of the things that you might notice is that Bob likes to play an A over the D. So technically speaking, it's a D slash A chord. All right, and that's gonna happen throughout the tune as well. Okay, so that A string sounding great over the D chord. Now, remember to follow the root for all of those chords. The C chord is gonna get the A string as well. The G chord will get the low E string because that's where the root is. But you don't have to just stick to that root. When you say root, sometimes it just means like kind of the bassier string. So it could be a combination of the A and the uh, sorry, the E and the A string. Now for the uh, C chord and the D chord, it could be a combination of the A string and D string. Okay, so that's pretty much sums up the strumming pattern, the strumming technique for this tune. Okay, fantastic. For the beginners out there, you have exactly what you need to be able to play through the verse. Now, for the more advanced players out there, or just anyone who's feeling brave, let's see if we can throw in a walk on the C chord. The G major chord, if you're playing it in this style, just like you hear it on the recording, will be just the same, root, down, down, up, down. But then on the C chord, I want you to give this a shot. Okay, so with the words, that would sound like, how many roads must a man walk down? All I did on the C chord was I hit the root, the A string, and then I did a down, up. Then I went over to the B note uh, relative to the capo second fret. Root down up. So it's walking down. Okay, I'm gonna leave my pointer finger intact. Then I'm gonna play the open A string and do our strumming pattern there. Then I'll go back to the G chord for the full strumming pattern. So, the G, C, G progression will now sound like this. Okay. Now, Bob does that throughout the song. Um, in a lot of instances, he does it every single time in a row, but sometimes he skips that A root and goes right to the G chord instead. I prefer to do that every other time. So, the way I'll play my verse then. How many? Walk, 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 and G down, 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 down. Before you call him a right to the G. I skip the A, man. And that's because I don't like the way that open A string sounds over the word man, just the way the vocal melody goes. Okay, so if you're doing two in a row, G C G G C G, it should sound like this. And yes, how many seas must the white dove sail before she sleeps in the... Now when you're walking to the D chord, you'll play. All right, that was the C. Then the second fret. And then right to the D chord. So you walked to the D chord, which you'll play for two measures. 
Okay, so now starting from how many C's must the white dove sail? We have the G chord. How many C's must the white dove sail? Right there. Transition from C to D, we just had the root, down, up, root, down, up. Then we went right to the D chord with the A in the bass. Maybe the second time I'll put a D in the bass. Okay? Really doesn't matter. Alright, finishing up the verse. Yes, how many times must the cannonballs fly? ready to get into the chorus. Okay, now let's jump into the chorus section. Congrats everybody who's made it this far. You're learning some very, very useful techniques. Um, for the beginners out there, you can play this with the same strumming techniques that you did with your verse. Okay, so that would sound like this. The answer, my friends, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. Okay, so that was just a C for a measure, a D for a measure, a G for a measure, and a C for a measure, a C for a measure, a D for a measure, and then you're back to the G chord. Okay, before jumping into the instrumental section. Now I'm going to show you how you can add in all of Bob Dylan's signature walk down transitions. It's going to sound like this. Okay, so that began with the C major chord, walk into the D chord. So that was that third fret, down, up, second fret, down, up. Open A string over the D. Root down, down, up, down, up. Then we're going to the G chord for that same strumming pattern. Root down, down, up, down, up. Okay, then we have the C chord coming in on wind. And following that is a C slash G, just taking that ring finger up to the low E string third fret. That's the first line of the chorus on your chord sheet. It sounds like this. All right, now the second line, the answer is blown in the wind. You just walk from C to D again. Okay, then you can go right to the G chord. Or you could cut the strumming pattern short on D a down up and play O two three on the low E string and then continue on with the strumming pattern over G. Just like that. Okay now moving on to the final segment of this lesson. How to jam over the progression that you're gonna find in the chorus. To put together the solo I did in my demonstration I borrowed mostly from the G major pentatonic scale. Okay. So that was um, three, oh, two, oh, two, oh, two, oh, three, oh, three. Everything relative to the capo, of course. Now, any good lead guitar player knows that scales are just kind of guidelines. You can always throw in a little bit of chromaticism. This is when notes are going fret by fret, okay? So instead of going maybe, um, I could play something like that, okay? So I'm also going to use the little area that we call the major uh, pentatonic extension, okay? This would include frets four on the G, three on the B, Five, three on the high A, and five on the high A.
Okay, just like that. All right, now, I'm gonna play for you the first lick that I played, which basically models and follows the melody line, just adding a little bit of uh, kind of guitar tricks, some uh, melodicism, and uh, some chromaticism to the main melody line. Sounds like this. Okay, so there's your first lick, it gets you right to the C chord. That was the G string, O, two, three, open B string, and the first fret B string. Okay, that'll sound great just as the C major chord comes in. Okay. Open B string, and then go to the second fret of the G string. All right, next lick. I, sl I slid up into that major pentatonic extension. Fourth fret G string, okay? Tap that a few times. And slide back. Open G. And hammer on to the second fret D string. So far you have. All right, I followed that up with. I hammered on to the first fret B string. Open B. Second fret G string. Open G, fourth fret D, and then the open G string to finish the melody line. Then I'm gonna do a little slide up to the fourth fret relative to the capo, and then I'll play the third fret high E string, which is the root, the high root of my G chord. So that'll sound great when the G chord comes back in. All right, you put all that together. One, two, three. Now you're ready to jam. All right, everyone, thanks so much for checking out this lesson on Bob Dylan's Blowing in the Wind. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have a song that you would like for me to teach next, click through the link in the description to put in your request today. I got many more lessons coming up, so keep checking back. Please subscribe, please share. This is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia saying happy picking.